Oh, we're live. We are live in the place to be. Good morning. It's actually cold. It ain't sunny California. It's, I mean, there's snow other places, but it ain't, it ain't not snowing here. It's a little bit of rain, but we could deal with a little bit of rain. For some reason, IG, you got some, some to figure that whole internet thing out over there. Good morning, you guys from, uh, from not so sunny California. Today, we're talking about how successful people think. Now, if you've tuned in a whole bunch of times, I don't know why. Let's see. Let's see if we can figure it out. Maybe the laptop? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's in the way. The, the Wi-Fi and the router, the Wi-Fi's crazy. Today we're talking about how successful people think, right? How do successful people think? And this is something I have studied. I spend time with these people. I spend time in my own head. Um, how do I get LinkedIn Live? You got to go and apply for it. It's a great question. A great question to start this morning. <laughs> so you guys, this is what I want to talk about today. How how do people that you might look up to, you might aspire to be or to have similar things in life at some capacity, how do they do things? Good morning, Angela Camster. How do they think, right? Good morning, Anthony. Hey, still in the ice box in Michigan. I bet you are. I'm going to, to Overland Park, Kansas tomorrow morning. I'm heading out to, to, to work with T-Mobile in there. Uh, I believe they've obviously recently merged with Sprint. So it's pretty much like old Sprint building is my assumption because it's like called Sprint Way. Um, Utah snowing as well. Hello, Drew Thomas, Jackie Bohannon, Titus Lee. What's up, my man? But yeah, I'm going to Overland Park, Kansas. So it's going to be snowing there. So I'll deal with the snow. But this morning when my bike ride was outside, it was a little bit rainy, a little bit crazy. But here's what I want you to talk about. It's actually probably people think like this. <coughs> I was choked just now on my, <laughs> my spit. Who does that? Oh, man, here we go. I want to talk about the thought process that successful people have. What might be separating you from success that you want? And you, let's be honest, you want something. Like if you, if you can't sit here right now and tell me, and I do want something more, but I just, I don't have it yet. Then you're lying to yourself. You're lying to me because I want things. It's okay to, to have a lot and still be happy with what you have, but not be completely content, right? Like I am a person that loves my life, but I'm not content. I do want more. Good morning, Tanya. Uh, so the idea is like, you got to be able to go and seek more, but how do you do it? How does the mentality behind a success? successful person operate. It's not just mindset. It's not just I get up real hard every day and work hard because I want to work hard. I want to be successful. I want money. That's not how people think, man. I, to be totally honest, I, here's what I find. A lot of successful people are trying to get into a consistent flow where they love their life, but they achieve more. Think about that. It's not balls of the wall, go real crazy, get stuff done, freak out. Like that's not, that's not what we're trying to do. We're not trying to be in this space all day where I'm always neurotic and always crazy and freaking out and I can't sleep. Like I sleep like a baby at night. I think at the end of the day, like I sleep really well because I know that I'm in a good consistent flow for getting things done, but also appreciating my life. And here's one of the first things that successful people I think think about differently than normal people. One, we genuinely think about the ways that we can run into problems that can improve us. And say this again, we are actively, and I consistently thinking about how can I set myself, for a, set myself up for a problem where I can get better? Because the truth is, if I just do what I do now, I'll have what I have now and nothing more. It's the truth, right? I'll have what I have now, I won't have much more. And if I want more, I gotta do some things different. You gotta do some things different, which means you have to seek out situations that might make you uncomfortable on purpose, like on purpose. You gotta push yourself in environments and locations and, and people, like communities and networks of people that make you feel small on purpose. And I'm telling you, I say this because a lot of people say, no, I, I do hard things. I make myself uncomfortable. Do you? Have you ever walked into a room and asked a question of a group that, that probably you felt might be a dumb question, but you didn't know the answer to? I've done it many times. I go into rooms all the time, man. I'm telling, I tell people, look, I am nowhere near your level and that I'm trying to get to this level, but I got a question. Now, I know this question might be one that you guys are going to laugh at, but it's one I don't know the answer to. I seek that out. Or do you ever put yourself in a position to say, look, pay me for this. I'm good at this. Pay me. And it's uncomfortable because what if they say no? What if they want to give you a discount? What if they don't know who the hell you are, right? It's uncomfortable. What if you do something where maybe you want to be in a great relationship, but like it's uncomfortable to go and, and talk to that girl you pass every single day uh, when you get coffee on the way to work, but you just don't ask. Therefore, you don't get that next level of maybe connection or maybe you're fearful of being rejected. What if you do get rejected and you realize, oh, I tried and I got rejected, but I didn't die. I could do it again, right? There's a mentality behind successful people that we seek out situations that make 
us uncomfortable on purpose. And if you aren't doing that at least one time a day in one capacity, I mean sending a message to somebody, making a phone call, posting something that might be a little bit, uh, people may not like it, right? If you aren't doing something like that, you're not putting yourself in a position to do the best. Tanya said, you gotta open doors in this life. Yes, you do, so many rooms, so many times. Frederick says, Nikki said, I need to make myself uncomfortable every day. Yes, Nikki, you gotta do that one thing every day. Find a way to get uncomfortable too. Lifelong learners, lifelong. I'm telling you, I, I just hired a new person for our team that's gonna manage a lot of the back end stuff that we do for the digital side. And we're having a conversation. It's like, man, how do you know all of this stuff? It's like, this isn't what people typically know. And I'm like, I, I tell them, I can code a website. I can literally install a car stereo in your car. I can change the axle alternators. I'm not a transmission guy. It's a little bit deeper than I ever went. But at the same time, I'll go fix your fence. I'll, I'll train your dog. Uh, I will, uh, I'll, I'll, I got a whole studio here. I built this studio. With my bare hands, I built this. And I, I say it not to be like, look at me, but to tell you, when I don't know how to do something, I do not ask somebody and wait five days for a response. If I ask somebody, I'm doing it while they're waiting. I am not a person that sits back and says, look, I'm gonna ask questions because I don't know, I'm not gonna do anything. I want to learn. Like, so when I bring somebody onto my team, I can have an educated discussion with these people about what's going on, what we're doing, right? I am not afraid of grabbing something new and digging in for hours and sitting there figuring it out. A couple, man, like a month ago, I built an app. I'm not even joking. I went to Glide Apps and I built an app because I was curious about how these things work. I then hired a company to make a way better one, which is coming out in a couple weeks. So find out more about that. But you gotta get to a point where you start understanding you gotta be a lifelong learner. Never be afraid of grabbing something new and picking it up. And I'm not, I'm not talking about like re reading a book. You can read a book. Like I'm gonna read a book, right? Okay, cool, I'm gonna read this book. I got the information. No, I'm talking about stuff that is frustrating, frustrating to you. I'm trying to go online, I wanna build a website. I don't know how to build a website. Well then learn, Google stuff, YouTube, watch videos, hours and hours, clicking back and forth, fixing buttons. If you don't have a mentality and a hunger to get to a point where you are trying to learn a lot, you are never gonna be at a level of success that you probably could have, right? Because here's the truth, there's gonna be a problem that you run into later on that needs you to have multiple levels and multiple experiences and multiple practices that you can then culminate to one point in time and say, look, I now got an opportunity, I'm prepared for it. But if you aren't a person who's consistently learning to do things, man, you got, you're gonna run into a problem. You're gonna get to a point where you'll find that, man, my life could have been more if only I'd learned this or done this or tried this, applied this, whatever that might be. And so my message to you in this, I, I wasted, I want to say wasted, an entire day figuring out how to build an app. And I'm telling you this right now. I'll never use the app. I, I, 10 hours of my day, I was bent towards this. But here's the thing. It's not wasted. The reason it's not wasted is because now I can have a discussion with my web developers on what needs to be done. And also, I save some money because they can't talk to me like I'm an idiot. They can't tell me things that I don't have a little base of knowledge about. I'm like, ah, I know what it's like to code that and that and that. I know what it's like to connect to this piece here. That doesn't sound like a 70 hour gig. Like I'm not paying an extra six to $10,000 for that thing when I made something like that in 10 hours, my man. So what's the real price, right? There's conversations that can be had. And if you don't get your mentality around learning, it's gonna be a difficult situation. Third thing, successful people think about how our minds work. Man, I got a reason for everything I do, everything. I got a reason for what's in my day and why it's there and how I do things, even if it's taking a break. If you don't know why you're doing the things you're doing, you're going to fall short because you're not gonna push past the moments when they get difficult. You're not gonna be a learner. You're not gonna be a person that seeks out desperation, seeks out hardship. You won't be a person that tries to find hard things because it's why, what's the point? Why are you doing it, right? If you don't have this mentality around, hey, I have got to get this thing done, I'm telling you, you're gonna run into a situation where you're gonna all of a sudden give up and you'll be on to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. If you find that you are a shiny object person, it's truly, at the end of the day, because you don't know really why you're doing that thing. You haven't dialed it in just yet. You haven't sat down and said, man, why, why is this so important to me? Why am I going to get up on the days when everything's falling apart, when the days everything sucks, when I don't want to do this, my body hurts, my mind hurts, I'm tired. Why will I still get up and go do this thing? Because if you don't know why you'll do it, if it's not rooted in something big, you're not going to do it. You'll only do it when it's exciting. And I'll tell you the truth, man, the path of success is not always exciting. It's just not. 
the path to the place you want to be along that journey, it's very difficult. There will be a lot of stumbling points. The reason they're there is for people who are uncommitted, who are undriven, who don't have a passion for those people to stop and turn back around. So the ones that are committed, that are driven, that deserve it, will keep on moving. It's the separator. It's what it is. And it doesn't come from whether or not you're smart or you have the capabilities or you know the right people or have all the money. It doesn't come from that. It comes from whether or not you have got to a point internally where you're committed to something that's so big that you will walk over glass with bare feet and walk and swim through hot waters with lava in it just to get to that place. Right? If my, if my children, here's a story. When I used to train for the NFL and I played like obviously for a few years. When I was doing my combine prep and I was training and I was playing and I was trying to get to the NFL, we have what's called a combine or you have a pro day at your college. Whenever I would run a 40 yard dash, here's what I think about. I'm not, it sounds a little bit crazy, but in my head, I convinced myself at the other end of this 40 line, my son, who was about three years old, four years, might have been three, three years old, my son was on fire. This is quite literally what I put in my brain. I convinced myself he was really there. I'm not just saying I said it and like, oh man, no, I, I, in my head, I had to get crazy, like a little bit, ah, he's there and he's on fire. And I would get to the line, I'd get set up and ah, I'd take off. And as I'm talking, I pulled every ounce of whatever I had in my body out, ran a fast 40. Why? Because I want to run a fast 40? No, because I was willing to do whatever it took to get to the far end as fast as humanly possible. I had a bigger reason why to do it. And so when you get to that mentality of like you convince yourself or at least you understand internally why you're doing something, it's a vastly different drive. You come from a different place inside. So if you're sitting here right now saying, and I want to have some success first things first, man, you got to go out and seek things that make you uncomfortable on purpose. Find something that, tur that turns a little bit of a weird dial inside that makes you go, ugh, I don't know if I can, but then you still do that damn thing. Two, consistently be learning. I mean, anything that you don't know and you know you need to know, dig into it. Ask questions. Try things out. Break some stuff. Figure it out. I'm telling you, along this journey, we'll find far more insights, far more information about things that you could never read in books. It would never make sense unless you experienced it. And if you are a person who leans into things and tries them out, tries them and breaks them sometimes. I've broken a lot of websites. I've broken a lot of car stereos. I've broken a lot of vehicles. I've broken a lot of things. But here's the thing. In breaking it, I learned so I could do it better and better and better. And the more you do, it accumulates. You try more and more stuff. But here's the truth. The problem that you are trying to solve right now isn't probably the problem that holds the key to your success. It's not. You haven't put yourself in front of it yet. But if you show up at that opportunity without the right tools, you'll never open the door. So you got to do the right things now to build the skill sets, the information, the tools where you get to that door that holds the access to your success. You have the tools to open that bad boy up. And then third, you got to get to a point where you understand why in the world you're doing it in the first place. I mean deep. And here's the thing that it should be such a deep reason that it's embarrassing to share in public. It should not be something you can rattle off your tongue and just say randomly because all of a sudden like, oh, what do you want to do it for? Because I want to work real hard because I'm doing it for my family. Yeah, that sounds good. And I, I believe you probably are. But the truth is, is that going to be the reason that's, that's strong enough to get you moving? Years ago when I owned a gym, I had a woman come up and say, I want, I want to get in shape. I said, great. Well, why do you want to get in shape? She started quiet. She got quieter. She says, well, I, I, I want to lose um, 10 to 15 pounds. Why do you want to lose 10 to 15 pounds? She got quieter, came in closer to me and says, well, I, uh, well, I, want, I want to be able to fit into these, the jeans that I used, to, I used to wear in high school, or at least like a couple of years ago. I said, why do you want to fit in those jeans? Like, what is, what's so important about it? She got really quiet and got really close. And she said this specific thing. She says, because I think that I'm not attracted to my husband anymore and it's affecting my marriage. Ooh. Now, I'm not saying I agree with this being the driving reason. I think a husband, that, that shouldn't be a thing where like, her looks alone should be an issue. I'm not going to say that. What I am saying, though, is, man, she had a reason as to why she was come to that gym. She lost 35 pounds. She lost 35 pounds. Now, whether the reason whatever it was, there was multiple times she called me and it's like, hey, I had a long day at work. The kids are acting up. I was busy. And I said, it's great. What are we trying to do right now? Why can't I just come next time? Okay, is that going to get you? Is that a good enough reason based on what you told me? You said you want to be able to get in shape to, to fix your marriage because part of it, I think it's a confidence thing too. You said you told me you're going to get there because you want to be able to adjust your marriage. Is your marriage more important than a bad day? These are things I used to say to her. And she's like, no, okay. 
You're right, she get in. And so her consistency kept, she kept moving past the point of stopping. Imagine if she stopped and didn't come one day and then ate bad. Well, she's back here and we go back to the next day, she's back here. She's doing this as opposed to going forwards, right? You've gotta know why you're doing it. It's gonna be a deep, dark, borderline, embarrassing reason if you can stick to that, if you can lock into that. I promise you, you find that far end at a place you never thought you could be with levels of success that don't seem realistic to you. I'm talking levels of success that seem awe, that seem like how in the world did this happen? It happened because you found things that made you uncomfortable. It happened because you learned things that nobody would even make sense to learn, but you just learned it because you needed to at times. And because you had a deep seated reason as to why you were moving. This is how the mind works for us. Successful people have a different tick, a different role. We have joy while doing it. Like I love the great things that I do. I'm telling you at the end of the day, I'm gonna dig, I'm gonna dig in and get some things done, man. And when I roll in that mentality, craziness happens. And this is what I impart upon people. It's what I give to the world, to the work that I do. So that is my message for you today. That's what I, that's what I gotta say. Uh, part person, Jamie. Oh, Jamie Pearson. Oh, Jamie Pearson. I used to train Jay years ago. That is so cool, man. <laughs> what it all, so she's on Instagram. I have no idea you followed me, Jamie. Jamie's awesome. A uh, client of mine. From the Serendipitous ability of life right, to take place. Anyways. I love you guys. I hope you have a phenomenal week ahead. I'm going to be getting uh, ready to roll to Kansas tomorrow to go speak for T-Mobile. I think 80,000 of their employees live or something. I want to get a little bit of motivation. What you can do is two things right now. One, you go to shiftstarterdaily.com and grab uh, an access port to my free podcast. It's daily podcast, shiftstarterdaily.com. It's free. I drop it every single Monday through Friday, eight minutes or less. Get a little pump in the morning, a little thought, a little seed for you to keep blossoming out of the amazing world. Two, if you're like, hey, I'm trying to figure out how to be more successful, eh? like what do I do? How do I get to another flow? And what I work on is I help people make shift happen. I, when I say it, I'm not playing around. Like I help you make shift happen. Stuff. Something crazy. Remove the F. You get what I'm saying. Health, wealth, relationship, whatever you want to figure out. I help you get there by getting you into a successful rhythm. It's called a progressive rhythm where the beat goes up. It's all about rhythm. I help you make a rhythm reset. Or whatever you're doing now, whatever you got going on, I dig in and help you adjust that by putting in a different rhythm. So what you know now, what you have access to, and what you will have access to in the future becomes powerfully useful and you can get to that tick where you're operating like a successful human. But you gotta reset your rhythm sometimes. And if you haven't done it or have no idea what that means, I need you to hit me up. All you gotta do is go to my inbox on DM, on Instagram and hit, uh, seriously, put in the word shift. That's it. Just type in the word shift. Done data, we'll contact you, have some fun. DM the word shift. If you guys are over here on Facebook, LinkedIn, Periscope, or YouTube, send me a message that says shift. Same thing, no different, shift. And I'll show you exactly what it is that we do that allows you to be able to make shift happen in your life in any capacity by making a rhythm reset, getting you into a flow that creates unstoppable, endless motivation. Like, I kid you not, the way we work with people, you never get up in the morning ever and you're like, oh, I don't wanna do this today. No, you're driven to get it done. You jump out of bed, you have joy. You have clarity on what every single day should bring what you're doing. There's never a guessing game. and never, There's never the overwhelm of like, oh man, I, I got so many things to do. No, we show you how to get multiple things done at the same time while enjoy and get your to-do list done every day and have more time to spare. Like it's, it's seriously, it's a very unique process called the shift method that we have amazing fun with and teach people how to do things. They make money, they fix marriages, they get in shape. We got people that have lost 100 pounds. We got people that have made $100,000 a week. We've got people that have got to the point of fixing a marriage that was not supposed to be moving. It was falling apart and fixed it. Like not craziness, it works. So seriously, deal the word shift. We'll show you how to work at that. Outside of that, have an amazing Monday. I love you guys. Seriously, I can't wait to talk to you guys. And on Wednesday, I may be a little delayed because I'm going to be filming, I think, right in that window of time whenever uh, I'm supposed to go live, 7.30 Pacific Standard Time. I'm going to be in Kansas. I think we're filming at like 9 a.m. Kansas time, so it might be that window. So it might be later in the day, but I will not miss you guys. That's it. Take care. I love you guys. I'll see you on Wednesday.